as educators who are concerned about the next generation and their learning, we would love to have students consistently experience deep and durable learning. I'm sure all of us agree that that's the goal, even if we're not educators, even if we're parents and we desire these things for, for children. But the sad reality is that uh, 12 years of uh, school before college and often a college education doesn't guarantee that we have produced deep and durable learning. My students seem to enjoy class. That was a plus. That means I didn't have discipline problems. But uh, the students and I were both frustrated that years later they had very little show for the fact that they had been in my classes. Uh, some of that was due to the fact that science changes rapidly. Some of it was due to the overwhelming amount of information. I mean, we're in the information age and exploding uh, access to information of all kinds. But what to do about that became a real issue. Uh, in fact, is it a problem that's soluble? And uh, a group of faculty, including my department chair, uh, would get together informally this started about 25 years ago to talk through some of this. And gradually some ideas crystallized. The floodgates kind of opened about what teaching and learning looks like, how to make it deep and durable, how to make it transformative for the students. Teachers need to adopt the perspective of uh, enabling learning rather than learning being simply transfer of information. And uh, that's, a, that's a fundamental insight because teachers love to talk about their subject matter. But is that what the student needs? Where we needed to go was to extract from this blizzard of information the, the core ideas, the high value ideas that at all costs the student needs to learn. And isolating those is no easy endeavor. Um, from all of the information that the teacher would like to talk about and all of the things that are available uh, that the teacher would like to add to his course but hasn't previously taught. So um, extracting those truths and being willing to sacrifice other things is, is one of the fundamental challenges from the teaching side. If my thinking is clear, which is step one, then I need to engage the student now in doing the thinking. We, we all learn best by doing. We cannot do the learning for the student. So learning is something that only learners can do. Sounds pretty obvious. Learning is something that then is learned through engagement in the classroom. And I need to, in some sense, reconfigure my classroom so that the students are engaged in thinking about these core truths, these powerful ideas that are going to equip them to think in the way that somebody who is proficient in this area thinks. And that's transformative again because we're not talking about transferring information, we're talking about uh, producing a way of thinking in the student and uh, getting them uh, on uh, a realistic level to be grappling with these ideas in the, in the classroom, where I'm actually engaging the student, probably in a discussion of some sort, um, to hear what they're thinking and then to guide their thinking through the skillful use of questions. They need to be held accountable for the quality of their thinking. So the, the third phase is actually assessment of some sort. We need some, some feedback about the quality of our assimilation of the ideas. So feedback is a good word uh, and not a threatening word particularly. I'm not going to know how well I'm doing and, unless somebody says uh, a little more of this, a little less of that, or maybe a better way to think about that would be to think in terms of this. So assessment is, is the piece where students really get the idea of the quality of their thinking. And ideally that moves toward real world application. They need to grapple early on with real problems, problems that they recognize are significant. 
problems that they would like to know the answers to. So we help them to see that the tools that we're giving them as they adopt a way of thinking and as they start to master a group of concepts is actually the means by which they can do productive problem solving with real world problems that, that matter. These ideas are broadly extensible. I've recently encapsulated these ideas in a book that I've written on this subject that's titled Unforgettable, which is of course the goal, that this is durable, transformative knowledge that these students have gained as a benefit of the learning process. Now when that happens, when the student experiences that, um, what they get is an enthusiasm for learning because this really works. Uh, they really feel the power of understanding ideas and they come to a place where they have an enthusiasm for learning that perhaps they've never had before. An enthusiasm because they, they recognize they're holding on to the high value things that they've learned and they recognize other horizons could be opened to them by applying these same principles of learning as they learn to think in other ways. This looks like exploring history from the standpoint of cause and effect rather than names and dates and, and people, and so on in every area of, of human endeavor. So what this leads to, it's led to in me and it's led to in my students, is this passion for learning that transforms them into lifelong learners. And that has been my goal all along.